wars and this misguided foreign policy, in my opinion, is a symptom of us all going a little crazy back in 2000, starting with the Republican Party. Let me just share a uh, where we got, there you go. Uh, let me just share some thoughts on this with you, if I may. This is uh, you know war is hell, and in fact, let's go to that whole notion. Not only is war hell, but um, the notion of of e of evil. We historically in the United States, you know, maybe 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 uh, George W. Bush and the Republicans. Just for a moment, let's let's just imagine that possibly they actually went to the dark side. Historically, this this five-pointed star was man, right? It meant man. It was it was a good it's the, it's the good thing. And if you flipped it upside down, the upside down five-pointed star with the goat with his chinny chin chin and his ears and his horns was the sign of Satan worshippers, a satanic star. Now you can see on the American flag, our stars are right side up. All across America, you'll see symbols with five-pointed stars. The stars are right side up, the, the man stars. But around the year 2000, the Republican Party changed their logo from the stars being right side up to the stars being upside down, coincided with the, the coming on the scene of George W. Bush and Karl Rove. Very strange. I think they need an exorcism. <laughs> Let's exercise them. Here's the exorcism. Number one, end the Bush tax cuts. Number two, end the Bush wars. And number three, end the crazy notion that corporations are people and that money is speech and that the rich can buy our nation. If we did that, we might bring the Republican Party back to sanity, back to its Dwight Eisenhower roots, back to the days when they actually could have an opposite opinion from the Democrats but honestly broker solutions and, and uh, situations and have reasonable conversations. Exorcisms for the Republican Party. Good idea. Today is more than one small country. It is a big idea, a new world order where diverse nations are drawn together in common cause to achieve the universal aspirations of mankind. That was President George H.W. Bush using the first Persian Gulf War as a stepping stone for a new world order. But that threat, it still persists today. The U.S. State Department, the Federal Reserve, even the EPA are sending billions of dollars overseas and many economic and political decisions made in the United States just don't benefit us. They benefit a would-be one world government. Joining us now is Jack Hunter, columnist for the American Conservative. Jack, this idea has been around for a long time, but it feels like we're getting closer and closer to the realization. Absolutely. This goes all the way back to Woodrow Wilson, who wanted to make the world safe for democracy, FDR, all the way up through President Bush and Obama, of course, George H.W. Bush, who were finding out his new world order is getting awfully expensive. I think that's what the American taxpayer is thinking right now. Uh, you know, Jack, I'm inclined to agree. Uh, the EPA has revealed that we sent $100 million overseas, to, and today they came out rather flipped, saying, well, we fight pollution around the world. But does that mean that a pig farmer in America should have money taken from him to help a pig farmer in Thailand? Absolutely not. And I would go a step further. Why are American citizens having to answer to international institutions and to obey what people who are outside of our Constitution and our government and political traditions, they should be telling American citizens what to do. Let me give you an example of that sort of overreach, that loss of sovereignty we see so often. A number of years ago in the state of Texas, and I don't care what you think about the death penalty, whether you're pro or anti-death penalty, an illegal alien killed someone and the Texas state justice system decided that that man needed to be put to death. Well, the United Nations decided that since that man was not an American citizen, it could step in and tell the state of Texas what to do. Who sided with the United Nations? You got it, George W. Bush. That's the road we're heading down. We need to have a U.S. Constitution, not a U.N. Constitution. The loss of sovereignty is something very serious, and we need to keep, keep an eye on it. Well, I, it would seem to me maybe go beyond keeping an eye on it. Just think... I mean, here recently, and I want your opinion, 
It feels to me that we uh, got involved with Libya to help out Europe uh, in some kind of way. Just a week ago, the, the International Energy Agency says, we want to release 60 million barrels of oil. Well, guess what 30 million is coming from? America. Uh, you know, decision after decision after decision seems like it's not only being made to benefit a global world, but it's actually being uh, sort of initiated from outside of this country. Well, that's exactly right. You hear a lot of people on the uh, Republican side, I don't care if it's Marco Rubio in the Senate, Tim Pawlenty here recently running for president, who like to talk about American exceptionalism. Now, when they talk about that, you can assume what we're doing in Libya or around the world is in our interest. Well, guess what? Often it is not. It is for the interests of other nations. It's for the interests of global elites. I don't care if uh, they're corporate or government forms. It's for the, in the interest of everybody but the American taxpayer who sends their sons and daughters off to fight these wars and foots the bill with their own money when we are out of money. It makes no sense whatsoever. And those who pretend that we're patriotic, I'm looking at the Republican side there, your Tim Pawlenty's, perhaps a Rick Santorum, uh, to think it's patriotic for us to be in Libya when 72% of Americans, according to some polls, say that they have no idea why we're there, we shouldn't be doing this much around the world. Who is our government serving, us or global elites? It's a good question. Uh, Jack, real quickly, uh, because of the programs like this and, and, and just the con fiscal conditions that we're in, it feels like there's a greater sense of urgency to, to, to get to that one world government. Do you feel like the Obama administration may actually be hitting the gas rather than the brake pedal when it comes to this? It seems like each president, uh, the, uh, his predecessor, of course, George W. Bush, government got big in this country. Obama's making government bigger at home. I think the, the dominant philosophy is that the bigger the government, the better, whether that's in the United States or at the global level. To answer your question, absolutely, I think Obama's got his foot on the gas pedal and is going full speed ahead with taking us towards a global government. And that's been the plan from the beginning. Look, this isn't a conspiracy thing, but the idea, this comes from the progressive left, right. the liberal internationalists in the Democratic Party, or even the neoconservatives in the GOP, they like the idea of a global government that sort of micromanages everybody, just right. like the big government people at home like the idea of the huge federal government that micromanages taxpayers. It's the same philosophy at work. Well, all I can say is buckle up, boys and girls, and hold on to the Constitution. Thank you very much, Jack Hunter. We appreciate it.